So this is the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Thank you so much for tuning into this video in which we'll go through more index laws. Specifically, we'll go through the zero power, powers of products and powers of fractions. So in the previous lesson, we learned the first three index laws. So remember, if we have a to the power of b, we call a the base and b the power or index. If we multiply bases together, we keep the same base and add the powers. Second one, if we divide bases we keep the same base and subtract the powers and the third one was called the power of a power rule so we raise a power to another power you keep the same base and multiply the two powers together three index laws we'll add to our list today they actually come from these three index laws so let's first look at the zero power. So let's start by asking, what is 2 to the power of zero? It's probably intuitive for you to say that would be zero. If you're multiplying 2 by itself zero times, you get zero. We have to start moving away from the idea, however, that this means multiply this by itself this many times. You can't multiply 2 by itself zero times. Instead, what we do is we define 2 to the power of 0 so it's consistent with these index laws. We know, for example, that 2 to the power of 4 divide 2 to the power of 4. Because of the second index law, we keep the same base and we subtract the powers, 2 to the power of 0. But 2 to the power of 4 is just 16. Anything divided by itself is equal to 1, except for 0. So this would have worked if I changed it to 3 to the power of 4, or 4 to the power of 4. So for that reason, anything to the power of 0 is 1. There's one exception to that though. I said anything divided by itself is 1. Well, anything non-zero divided by itself is 1. So you can't have 0 to the power of 0 that would be 0 divided by 0. So anything non-zero, power of 0 is equal to 1. That's our fourth index law. Anything raised to the power of 0 is 1, as long as the thing being raised is not 0. So that is consistent with the second index law. So let's say we had something like 2 times 3, and we wanted to raise that to the power of 4. Well, that would just be this times by itself four times. But the thing is, the order of multiplication doesn't matter. So we can put all of these twos together, we can do them first and then do the threes. But of course, two times by itself four times, this thing here is just two to the power of four. And this is just three to the power of four. So hopefully you can see that when we are raising a product, so we have a product in brackets to a power. We just raise the first thing to that power, which we got here, and then raise the second thing to that power, which we got here. So that's a pretty intuitive index law. So now let's look at our final one, which is involving fractions. So rather than two times three to the power of four, let's say I had two over three to the power of four. So we know that that's just multiplying two thirds by itself four times. But when we're multiplying fractions, we can just multiply all the tops together. So that's two to the power of four. And we can just multiply the bottoms together. So that's three to the power of four. So you can see when I took a fraction and I raised it to a power, I just raised the top to that power and the bottom to that power. And that's our sixth index law. When you have a fraction raised to a power, you just raise the top to the power and the bottom to the power. So they're the six index laws we need to know. We will do questions involving these three laws that we've already learned. So let's look at a few examples. So let's go ahead and do these four questions. Once again, we're simplifying, writing in index form. So it should be, you know, something to the power of something. And we're going to have no brackets. So the first one's really easy. That index law, you just raise the top to the power and raise the bottom to that power. No problem. So the second question, that involves the fifth index law from the previous slide. So we have a product three times x in brackets, raised to a power. So we need to raise the three to the power of six as well. 
to get 729. People always forget that. You don't just raise the x to the power of 6, you also raise the 3 to the power of 6. So it'll be 729 x to the power of 6. So let's look at the third one. We're actually going to need a few index laws here. So we're going to need to raise the 2 to the power of 3 to get 8. Now we also need to raise this to the power of 3. That requires an index law from the previous lesson where we keep the same base and multiply the powers because this is power to a power and then we're done. All right, the fourth one is a little messy, but we're going to be able to do it. So let's first look at the brackets here. So we have a fraction raised to a power. So we raise the top to that power. So we need to raise 4 to the power and then x squared to the power of 3. So we've raised the top to that power, we now need to do the same for the bottom. So we raise 5 to the power of 3, and then we raise y to the power of 4 to the power of 3. Once again, power to a power means you multiply the powers. So let's go ahead and simplify this other fraction. So here, the 2 is outside the bracket, so it is not getting raised to the power of 3. But x squared will get raised to the power of 3, and then y will get raised to the power of 3. So we raise this to the power of 3 and this to the power of 3 by the index law. And on the bottom, so we raise 5 to the power of 2, x to the power of 2, and y to the power of 2. Okay, so that's again the fifth index law. If you've got things being multiplied together, you raise each of them to the power. So remember, when you're dividing a fraction, you flip it and make it a times. Okay, so now there are a few ways we can simplify. We can either multiply the tops together, then multiply the bottoms and simplify, or you might like to cancel here. It's up to you. I'm actually going to cancel at this stage. So 125 and 25 have a common factor of 25. 25 goes into itself once, goes into 125 five times. Similarly, 2 goes into itself once and goes into 64 32 times. So we have an x to the power of 6 here and here, so we can cancel them out. You can cancel anything on the top that has a common factor with something on the bottom. So what we're left with on the top, we have 32x squared y squared. On the bottom, we have y to the power of 12 times y to the power of 3, which is y to the power of 15. So then... We can leave the 32x squared because there are no common factors. And that will be over y to the power of 13. So that is our final answer. Now we're just going to look at a few quick examples involving the zero index. So in this case, we have four expressions we're going to evaluate. That means give a value to. So let's start. So k to the power of 0, if k doesn't equal 0, that is just 1. Anything non-zero to the power of 0 is 1. So let's look at the second example. So we have to use order of operations. We have minus 3 times k to the power of 0. Raising to a power comes before multiplication. In bid mass, it goes brackets, index, then division multiplication. So this is actually minus 3 times this thing here is 1. So it's minus 3 times 1, which is minus 3. Now in the th third one, we're raising everything to the power of 0, including the minus 3. So, minus 3 times k, doesn't matter what it is, it won't be 0. So, if you raise it to the power of 0, you get 1. Because in the last one, we didn't raise minus 3 to the power of 0, this time we did. Alright, let's look at the final example. So, we know that this thing here is 1, we just did it. So, on top, you get 1 times, now, 7 times 1 times 1 because we're not raising the 7 to the power. So that's what's left on top, and on the bottom, m to the power of 0 is 1, times 5 is 5. It's 5 times 1, because we're not raising the 5 to the power of 0. So that's just 7 over 5. Notice in all of these cases, we gave a value. All right, thank you so much for tuning in to this video. The first three students who reference this video and say the Broncos rule, you will get a chocolate as a thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day. This has been the luckiest maths teacher in the world.